Good day students. Today we're going to look at a few solutions now for perimeter and area. These are taken from the sample assignment in um, chapter 6, book 3. And the sample assignment starts on page 35, but these two are taken from page 37, page 38. Find a perimeter and area of each figure. Find the perimeter and area of each figure. Okay? Now let's look at 12B first. We have a triangle. We're given the three sides of the triangle. Okay, 7.5 meters, uh, 7.23 meters, and 8.43 meters. So getting the perimeter, which means the distance around something, for perimeter we always add up the sides, okay? when it's a triangle or a rectangle or a, any type of polygon where the sides can be added okay so this case we're just going to add up the three sides so it's 7.5 plus 7.23 plus 8.40 and that will give us a total of 23.1 I believe let me just double check that and this, of course, is meters when it's perimeter, just meters, not meters squared, not meters cubed, just meters for perimeter, just adding up the lengths around. 23.1 meters. Now, it did not say how many decimal places, so when it doesn't say that, one decimal place is common. Another common way to do it is use significant digits. And we can see we've got three significant digits here. We have three here. We have two here. And when we're adding, we use the highest so it'll be three significant digits which 23.1 is okay um, well it's 23.13 actually I think right when you add them all up yeah and we'll take off the three and go three significant digits not four so either or but most cases it's usually one decimal place anyway if you're not sure okay the second one is the area. Now the area of a triangle is a specific formula and I'm sure you've seen it in class is half the base times the height. Now base and height is important here. Base and height means these are perpendicular to each other. There's a right angle between the base and the height. So if I see that as a right angle then I can refer to this side as the base. So this would be the base and the side that's perpendicular must be the height. So this is taken to be the height. Not this side, not these are sides of the triangle. 6.03 is the height. So perpendicular between the base and the height, or right angle between the base and the height. That's important. So as you can see, 6.03, therefore, right, this becomes the height of the triangle. The height is the perpendicular distance. So this is the height of the triangle, and this is acting as the base of the triangle. So again, it's very simple. One half, all right, and put in your values, the base is 8.40 times 6.03. Now, if I multiply that out, I get 25.326. Now, it is what? Meters times meters. So it's meters squared. Area is always in square meters. Okay, and again, for significant digits, 3, 3. So we can go three significant digits or one decimal place in this case. So there's your final answer for the area of the triangle. Now in the second one, okay, uh, in the second one we're asked, okay, I'll just put a line down to split the two. The second one is a circle. Now the perimeter of a circle, of course, has a specific name. Okay, the perimeter of a circle is its circumference, right? So the perimeter of a circle is the same as the circumference, the distance around. Now you just can't add up anything because you don't have any sides. It's not a polygon. Okay, so the perimeter here is a specific formula. The perimeter of a circle, and I'm sure your teacher has gone over this as well. The perimeter of a circle, of course, is 2 pi r. 
2 pi r, 2 times pi times r. That's a specific formula that you have to memorize, okay? So I'll put a little asterisk around that. You should know that formula. So all you do now is put in the radius. However, if you look at the diagram, what do you notice? You're given the, that's right, you're given the diameter. The diameter, okay, this is d the diameter. Now we know that the diameter is twice the radius, or we could say it the other way, the radius is half the diameter. We need to find, right, the radius for the formula. So you've got to do half of 23.4 first. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to get the radius. And what is half of 23.4? Okay, it's 11.7. So let me put a little circle around that. That's important. So anytime you're given the diameter, you must find a radius to get the perimeter. Now you could use pi times diameter, but we're all, we're so used to the formula now, we automatically. You're going to need the radius to get the area anyway, so get the radius. All right, so it's 2 pi times 11.7. Okay, now I'm just checking that on my calculator. Pi can be used as 3.14 is common, and I see 3, so we'll go with one decimal place, 73.5. Now put the unit of measure in. What is it? Millimeters. Is it square millimeters, cubic millimeters, or just millimeters? It is just millimeters, right, because it's perimeter. Now, we don't use P letter, do we? So let's take out the P. What do we use for? Much more common to see what here? Exactly, circumference. So let's put that in. All right, so the circumference is, okay, but remember circumference is the same as perimeter. The circumference is the perimeter of a circle. All right, and the next one is asking us for the area of the circle. What's the area of the circle? Okay, and the area, of course, is pi r squared. All right, pi r squared. Now, if I look at pi r squared as a formula, again, I need the radius, right? So what is the radius? The radius is 11.7. We've got to square that value, and multiply it by pi. And again, you can have several decimal places here because pi is 3.141159 dot 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 or those who are using 3.14 and yeah, we're going to round to one decimal place three significant digits here which is again this is millimeters squared correct because it's area right so we have millimeters squared for area okay so there you have it there's the perimeter and or circumference and area for two different objects next video will deal with volume and surface area questions